Hey y'all, Walker Ross here, back with another one. So today I'm gonna to be showing you how to do a European mount on a white-tailed deer. And it's a pretty universal way for any kind of deer species. So there's a lot of different ways that you can go about it. This is just the way it works best for me personally. And it's pretty simple process. So just follow along with me and we'll get her done, and hopefully by the time you end this video, you'll know how to do a European mount. So to get started on doing a European mount, you'll need a few items. Most of which things you probably already have. I would say other than what you're gonna to need to skin the deer with, you're gonna need a pressure washer and a cooker, like a turkey fryer and a pot. I got a turkey fryer and the pot at um, the hardware store, you know, they shouldn't be too hard to find, but that's what you'll need later on in the process. But to go ahead and begin, you need a deer. Get you a deer. Next, you'll need a knife. I like something with an interchangeable blade, um, a scalpel blade. You know, Outdoor Edge makes a good knife. Havilon makes a good knife. And on certain taxidermy websites, they sell scalpels and knives. So get you something sharp and with an interchangeable blade. Next, You'll need a screwdriver. I'll show you why later. Get a Phillips head and a flathead. A good pair of pliers goes a long way. Get a pair of pliers. And you can't forget gloves. Gloves keep the blood off your hand and keep your hands from getting greasy. So to begin, get your knife and we're gonna take all the hide off this deer. Your main priority is to get all the hair off of the skull. You know, you can leave some meat on it but your best option is to take as much meat as you can off with a knife without becoming you know, overwhelmed with getting little pieces of meat off. Just get all the big pieces of meat and the high. So now we've got the hide off. Best way to do this, run up the nose, make a Y to the burr of the antlers, cut as close as you can to the burr to get all that meat off the burr, and you'll, you'll see why later. Do that, once all the hide's off, then begin cutting all the excess meat you can off, including the jawbone and the eyes. So a lot of people have trouble getting the jawbone off. They think it's a real strenuous process. In reality, you have to make four cuts to get the jawbone off. You'll wanna make one cut up this side of the jawbone, one cut up this side of the jawbone, and you'll wanna cut the meat that's right here. That'll cut the jawbone loose, and then the rest is all manpower. Pull the jawbone back, and it should come off. After you get the jawbone off, next you'll want to take off the skull plate. I think that's what it's called, skull cap. I'm not even really sure. But there's a big piece of bone on the back of the deer's head. Right here. And you'll notice it because you can pick it up and kind of move it. You want to make a cut right here and you'll want to get rid of that. All right. So what we've done now is we've took off the hide, we've took off the jawbone, we've removed the eyes, and we have removed just about as much meat as you can remove without driving yourself crazy. So this is what your deer should look like. There's no right or wrong way to do it. There's just you know little tips and little shortcuts you can take. So remove the eyes, remove all this skin that hides in here, on each side, remove the jawbone, 
and there's a lot of meat that's gonna be stuck right here. Just whittle what you can off and worry about it when we go to pressure wash it. Okay, so now we're at the cooking process. We've removed all the hide we can off of the deer skull and we've removed all of the meat we can. I've placed it in a four gallons of water, clean water, and now we're going to cook it. Now, what you want to cook with is something like OxyClean or Dawn dish soap, something that will degrease your skull and work away at the meat. What I have here is called Sal Soda. It, you get it off of McKenzie Taxidermy's website. It degreases the skull and it eats away at the meat. So it, when you get done, the meat will be almost like a jelly and it comes off way easier in the pressure wash. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this on, we're gonna light it, and we're gonna turn it as high as you can and we're gonna let it cook for, say, 30 minutes. And there's no really specific time just whenever this water reaches a boil. As soon as it hits a boil, turn it down and then you should be almost done. When you pick your skull up out of the water to check it, you'll see that the skin on the nose has started to separate. That's how you know that you're ready to pressure wash. Now, if you cook this too long, then you'll start having the bone separate and fall off when you pressure wash it. So just make sure you don't cook it too long. Like I said, I think it takes about 30 minutes to, for it to cook and end up the right way. All right, so now that we brought it to a boil, as soon as it brought to a boil, we turned it down to just a simmer, left it in there for just a minute or two. Now we're gonna take it out and pressure wash it. pressure washed the deer skull we've got off most of the meat now see you don't have to get off every single piece of meat but it helps see what we're going to do next is put it in the whitening solution and what this whitening solution is supposed to do is make it white but it's also going to eat off a lot of this skin that you really can't get off with a pressure washer there's a lot of stuff that's still stuck in here and what my whitening solution is going to do is hopefully break that down that way when you pressure wash it the next time after we boil it again it'll come off easily get your Phillips head screwdriver put it inside these ear holes right here and pop these earbuds out these earbuds hold a ton of tissue and when they dry it'll start stinking back here and it, it just it's not a good look it looks better with them out so put your screwdriver in the ear hole pop them right out Next thing, get you a bigger screwdriver, or you can even use this one, or like a chisel or something. There's like a small piece of membrane, a little bit of bone right here. Punch you a hole in there. And just, just punch a hole through that cartilage and membrane and a little bit of bone that there is right there. Earbuds are popped out. We've watered a hole back there. Next thing we're gonna wanna do, get your handy dandy pliers in here whole bunch of nasty stuff nasal cavity take your pliers and get all this junk out there's like bone and stuff in there but it's this thin bone it pops right out get all the cartilage out and there's like sinus stuff in there that all needs to go Once we've got the meat, hide, and everything off of the skull, we're going to 
wrap the antlers in some kind of plastic wrap to keep the whitening solution from getting on the antlers. This is really important because the whitening solution will turn the antlers bone color white. So wrap these up, put a zip tie at the bottom and the top or some electrical tape. All right, so now that we've got our horns taped up so that nothing can get in them, they need to look something like that right there. We have got a 50-50 mix of water and Salon Care 40 volume cream peroxide. The only place I know that you can get this is on Sally's Beauty website or at their store. This is a gallon, it's the cream. Now there's, there's cream and then there is just regular old like watery liquid. Uh, but you, you want the cream. So fill your pot half and half. If you use three gallons of water, use three gallons of this stuff. And you know, you don't, you don't want it all the way to the top. You want it just enough so that the whole skull fits in there like it should. So we're gonna start this thing up, turn the heat on high, and we're gonna cook this until it hits a boil. When it hits a boil, you're ready to take it out and I lay it back down, pressure wash anything that didn't come off in the initial pressure washing and you should have a finished project. All right, we just brought it to a boil. As soon as it hit the boil, I turned it way down, and I'm going to let it sit here for just, just a minute. And I'm going to go pressure wash it, and after we pressure wash it, that should have all of the meat off, you know, pretty much all gone. And let's see what it looks like just out of the boil. Make sure you don't get this stuff on your clothes, it'll bleach it out. See there? Dang near white. It'll look a lot better when it dries. Well, that's what you want it to look like. It, uh, it turned out pretty well. I mean, when you bring it out of the whitening solution of the peroxide, it's not gonna look just majestically white but if you'll hang it up in the sun and let it dry for a few hours or a day or whatever it may be it'll bring the white out of it and it'll look great so now let me remind you that the number one rule of this pressure washing stuff is to get all the meat out but to do that make sure that you spray in every single hole of this animal you know there's a lot of tissue that grows up beside the eye there's a lot of tissue that grows inside the nose and on the back of the skull spray in every single hole there is and you'll end up having something that looks like this so i'm gonna let it dry and i'll get back with y'all tomorrow and we'll show you what the finished product looks like okay y'all so it's been one day since we've done the whitening process on this skull and like i said before when you can pull it out of the whitening solution it's not going to look crazy white and real pretty but once you let it dry and all the water seeps out of it and it pulls that white and stuff into the bone, man, does it turn pretty. I mean, that's that's as white as I can get one. I mean, if you don't like that, something's wrong with you. So, I, you know, I had the antlers wrapped up, that way the peroxide wouldn't hit the antlers, so we'll pull that off. And you'll see there, we still got a good dark line all the way up through there. No peroxides hit the antlers. And you remember whenever I told you you wanted to cut the meat off as close to the antlers as you can? Well, the reason for that is that way whenever you wrap your uh, antlers up, you don't get all that meat and stuff in there and then you have to, you know, pry it off after you've done everything. And sometimes it leaves a little bit of discoloration uh, right here at the burr. But, so after I've let it dry for a day, there's, there's, you know, there's a reason behind that. So other than letting it whiten up a little bit, you'll see everything that you've missed as far as getting tissue off in a day or maybe even two days, it'll start turning yellow. Anything that's not bone is gonna turn yellow. So if you look up in here, 
underneath these things, there's yellow tissue that's growing up under here and around here. All I know to do is take a knife and whittle that stuff off. Make sure you've got all the tissue out of the brain hole here. Um, check inside the nose here because sometimes you'll miss stuff. That peroxide will turn things white, but after a day or two it'll turn yellow. And you look up in there and you can see what's not bone. So just check over your skull, make sure everything is off of it as far as tissue goes because what you don't get off, it'll start stinking eventually. Should look like. You shouldn't have any stains around the antlers from your peroxide. You shouldn't have any discoloration in the front of the skull. You shouldn't have any tissue hanging off back here. It should be a clean, good looking, professional skull. Now, by no means am I a professional um, skull cleaner, but I know how to make one look half decent. So this is for a friend of mine, so I had to pick and groom all this stuff out of here more so than I would one just for myself. But let me know if y'all have any questions. If you do have any questions, drop them down in the comments. Like this video if you will, and please subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate y'all following along with me, and I hope you have a great day.